Greetings, flesh creatures. It is I, Megatron. On behalf of TFYLP, I want to congratulate you for listening to the most refined collective podcast on this miserable little planet Earth. Yes. Here you'll find knowledgeable fans discussing every aspect of Transformers and beyond. Now... Enjoy the show while I continue my path to complete conquest of all of you miserable biological entities. Predacons, terrorize! Hello, welcome to TFLP Microcasters. I've got the usual crew with me, uh, Christian and Anna. What up? Good evening. And I'm Lucas. Are you the... Uh, sure. I don't know. Sure. Paul is over here complaining that we hadn't started the show yet or something, uh, which I feel like is, is bad for him because that's somehow tomorrow night when Oof is going, he's gonna his computer's going to crash right at 830. He messes us. He wanted to see us. Mm-hmm. He said you guys are so cool. Miss you. Sure, that's what it is. It is. I brought a telegram, Randall. Don't worry. Jeez, are we already getting a costume? We haven't even said, like, Happy New Year yet. Happy New Year. Yeah, right? Happy New Year. Well, we said Happy New Year yesterday friends. on the regular show, Christian, which you weren't on. I was not invited to be on that show. I talked to our fans first this year. I just want you guys to know at book club, I was the Good. first one to speak to them. You guys were snoozing, as you like to say. Oh. So, well, I think Christian said that he loved Earthrise, so we didn't want to have him on the show, so. Yep, that's that's what it was. Christian definitely <laughs> didn't say that. I don't nope. misquote people. That's a crime in my field. <laughs> yeah, yeah you was, were invited to book great. club, Christian. Cog is the best, though. I will say that Cog is the absolute main hero of this entire thing. Did you watch you, the show, Christian? No. Last night? Wait, you you should. We, night. we ranted hard. Yeah, I've heard. I, I will go back and get it tomorrow, probably while I'm working. Good, good. It was, it was unhealthy entirely. Really? That show Great. was unhealthy entirely. <laughs> oh. Yeah. But we're not here to talk about that show. You could watch that last, you know, what we thought about it uh, on TFRP. Because uh, our new friend night. is not from that show, Mr. Cyclonus. Cyclonus so. is a kingdom figure. Yeah, he is. It's our first kingdom review. Yeah, first kingdom there review. You go. It is Read not in an the new year. It's in fact an 80s character, not a Beast Wars character. Lilac Space Jet. Look at it. It's pretty, Lilac right? Lilac Space Jet. He is pretty. I still have his sister on my desk. I don't know what that means. His sister, see? It's his, his sister. sister. Oh. The other jet. Okay. That's kind of like him. Got it. Excuse to show off Kato garbage. If you were here in person, this thing is very spiky. I am not. You're like a thousand miles away from me. I know. So, so the Cyclonus what? this year. Let's start with the airplane. Yeah, it's Lilac Space Jet. And first off, this is one of the cleanest jet modes I have ever seen. Like, kind look at that. There's, I mean, yeah, you can. If you have been in it long enough, you're like, oh, yeah, those are the arms, those are the legs. But they're not obvious arms and legs. They're fantastic. Look at that. It's wonderful. I like it a lot. Yeah, it's, it's a really good jet mode. Like, it. So, I, I someone was recently talking about how the G1 figure was garbage, and maybe it was. But I have really positive memories of the G1 figure, and that jet makes me as happy now as the old jet did when I was like, you know, five or six. So it's exciting. Like, this Good. is a big nostalgia figure for me. The only one that I have to compare it to is the universe one, and everyone's like, oh, that one's so amazing. No, that one, I'd never really liked that one. This one, this one's where it's at. I mean, this I has like similar this. beats to the universe figure. It, not exactly, but, you know, it reminds me a little bit of it. There is something interesting that Lucas and I kind of discovered that Anna turned us on to and Lucas and I talked about before the show came on. And that's that uh, 
at least on all three of our figures, there's a manufacturing defect with this panel right there. Yeah. It's misshapen, so it doesn't quite sit flush. Like, this side sits really flush. It's very nice. This side does not. I figured when I opened mine, it was like a weird one-off thing. And then Lucas was like, yeah, mine does that too. And Anna said hers did that too. So maybe it does that. Yeah, I don't know if any of the viewers can confirm whether or not theirs is the same way. So, I mean, really, I feel like that's the only, like, nitpick I can really give of the figure, like, in jet mode. Yep. Yeah, pretty much. It's really a bummer, though, because, like, once you see it, you can't unsee it. I might so you start staring at it. And reshape it into the right shape, we'll see. It's not horrible, it's not egregious, but it's not great either. No, from well, a distance, you probably won't notice. And compared to the paneliness and the problems with a lot of the cars we review, like the Runabout Runamox mold, mm -hmm. it, it's nowhere near that bad, right? It's no. one spot. <laughs> I was going to say, one other issue that I have is, is like, one of the uh, kneecaps is, like, slightly coming apart on mine. I don't know if your guys is the same way, like, slightly separated. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, again, it's it, it's one of those things where it's kind of like a nitpick. It's, you know, whatever. He does have these really neat translucent orange windows. And for a brief moment, when it was hit hit by the sun on my coffee table today... I thought that the screw that was holding the cockpit in place inside was actually a Galvatron figure going, grrr. But oh, that'd be fun. I thought it was briefly. I was like, oh, is that in there? There's no way they sculpted that. And they, they did, but it looked like it's for a second. Only it was, right? That'd be so fun. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. What a shake. I feel like the uh, purple is, is a nice shade of purple as well. Like, I, I like yes. it. And almost more importantly, it's pretty uniform throughout. I mean... The wings are different, and the I guess these are ailerons or elevators. These are elevators. These are ailerons. They're uh, they're different colors, but they're supposed to be different. They're all they are the same color between them, and the main body is the same color throughout. Uh, like Anna mentioned with the cars we've been reviewing, a lot of times the Hasbro seems to be having trouble paint matching plastic colors. They mm -hmm. didn't really do that this time. They just have this lilac plastic throughout, and they have different purple paint. No, he's a good color. Like, it yeah, may or may not be your Cyclonus color, depending on where you saw him first in the world. Like, you might want him in a darker purple. You might want him in a darker purple. You really can't have lighter purple or it's just pink. But at the same time, this is a good one, right? This yeah. is a good color. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'd say compared to just looking at the screen right now and seeing the two of them, I'd say compared to pictures, it actually is a little bit lighter in person. It's a very light lilac color. It's pretty. It's a nice it's color. Lilac, I yeah. like it. It's a nice color, yeah. though, yeah. Nice. yeah. She's cool looking. Oh, I like it. Yeah, the jet is really nice. It actually has landing gear, so you can stand it up nicely. Yeah, that's yeah. nice. Yeah, yeah that's had landing gear. kind of crazy. Yeah, you <laughs> wouldn't expect like, Clonus to have landing gear, right? Because he's a weird space jet. The original had landing gear. But I just don't expect, like, the weird space jet to get well, landing gear, whereas a lot of the, like, real jets don't. And and it has landing gears on the back as well. I mean, there's three yeah. of the, the, them on him. Yeah, they all come out, so they're not, like, just egregiously sticking out when he's in robot mode or anything. Yeah. No, it's really nice. It's and the crazy. transformation, which I think the two of them are about to attempt on camera, which could be somewhat fun oh. to watch, is... It's sure. not, like, hard, but it's semi-complex, mostly because of the nesting doll nose cone, My, is um, amazing. Like, the legs are a little bit tight. Like, I had some trouble whenever I was initially transforming it, trying to get the... I did, too. Because, like, whenever, uh, when you transform the, like, legs, it, like, they kind of, there's, like, a double joint in the knee, and, mm -hmm. um... Anyway, I, I had trouble, like, the first time trying to get it. I don't know if you had any issues, Anna. Uh, it was a little tight. It wasn't bad, bad, because I knew what I was supposed to do with it. Like, that was kind of the cool thing about this, is I do consider this a slightly more complex than average figure, but I didn't have to get out the instructions to make sure I didn't break it. It was intuitive, mm -hmm. like, yes. for once. A part that I want to praise here is that it, it's got this, uh, this is the back end of the vehicle mode. It's got... Uh, a part so you can a blast effects look like it's actually flying off. Um, a lot of times, I feel like Hasbro in the past 
would have not included this extra part and just made his feet hang off the back and be the back of the vehicle mode. But instead, the feet collapse and this covers the gap. I don't know. It's just a neat touch that I feel like five years ago we wouldn't have seen. Yeah, and vice versa. You get to tuck the foot away or you test the thruster away. It's nice. <clears throat> It Randall says I clean. found the secret third mode. What's the what's the hidden third mode? Am I like the girl walk mode? Yeah, I think you had a bit of a girl walk mode going on. Yeah, there, there you go. Always important. Very unimportant. Please don't do it ever again. <laughs> every every airplane needs legs and arms. No. no. There's my there's so my hot take for the evening. Thank you. We really appreciate it. We needed it. <laughs> so I'd say the coolest thing about the transformation on this toy is be that that nose cone, like, you can notice on mine, none of that nose cone is present, like, anywhere on this figure, because it's all tucked away inside of his chest. It nests three or four times in order to do yeah, that. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of crazy that it just, like, yeah, like you were saying, and it keeps nesting and nesting and nesting. Yeah, it's nice. Is it like every time I thought I was done, I was like, no, it's not quite a, at a point no. yet. It holds more. It was just fun. It was, it was well done. Like the arms transform more or less exactly like every Cyclonus's arms, right? Like that's not wild. Yeah. The legs are good. Like we said, they're pretty, they're pretty typical, but they're still really good. And yeah, that's pretty much how it. how to nest. I think the thing about this figure is is just like the quality overall of it. Like it almost like doesn't feel like a Hasbro figure because I mean again like we had talked about some of the QC things, but like the I don't know, it seems like all the extra touches that we always like complain about on Hasbro figures that they didn't go that extra mile, like it feels like they went the extra mile. Yeah, pretty much. And I wanted to point out while they're transforming, I'll do some nice comparisons for us because I got nothing better to do with my world. Um, I've still got Double Dealer on my desk from when we were talking about Earthrise. Um, he's, you know, almost as big tall-wise as Double Dealer. He's obviously not as girthy as the bigger dude. But he's a pretty good-sized Voyager, Cyclonus says. Oh, Paul says there's nothing more exciting than watching three Transformers fans transforming at the same time. They to be only fair, it was not too, Paul, that. because I'm not transforming nothing. Done. I'm say, so fast. We were, uh, we, we normally don't like to transform things on air. So there you go. That's why. No, I'm it's doing side comparisons for everyone. That was a leader. This is a deluxe. He's in a stupid pose. Well, he's in a cool pose, but it looks stupid. So, you know, like I said, he's a good-sized Voyager. He's not really that much. It feels like, for some reason, something about the way he presents makes him feel like he's a bigger Voyager than some of the other ones. But I, I do feel like he, feel, he feels like a pretty big uh, Voyager. He does, but I got Megatron out earlier, and they're basically the same size. So, I don't know where oh, I put are that they? Megatron. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, maybe it's just so because he side by side he's gonna dwarf Megatron, but he doesn't. Maybe it's just because he feels so solid that <laughs> I think so. I did it. I got him. I'm having yeah. trouble with the back. I don't know why. The very first thing I want to point out is that after years and years and years it seems. There's light piping. Good okay. light piping. There's good light piping. But we've really had light piping on things. some other figures too. Like Soundwave is really good and oh, yes, Starscream was really good. I don't remember Starscream having it, but I believe you. This one's great mm -hmm. at it though. Like when I held him up for the first time in this room, my light's right here. So I kind of held him up here to look at him. I was like, oh wow, those eyes. They're scary. Pretty scary. They look super cool. Glow. They're a little orange, not red, but that's okay. You know, when I first looked at him yesterday, I took him out of the box last night so I could prepare for this show. Uh, I did not like this face. I thought it was really a, kind of a generic face. Looking at it again now, uh, I kind of like it. I'm not sure. It's his face. because I've been looking at him 
in IDW for so long that uh, I'm not used to this version of the face anymore. Yeah, like a lot of the, you know, we're we're on the cusp of getting to review Studio Series 86 soon. And like a lot of those faces, they're very like plain, expressionless, long versions of those characters' faces. And I think he fits that bill exactly. It's just the head came out good looking. Like some of them, like the blur face, don't seem to come out very good. I haven't seen it in person yet, but this one still comes out nice. Six was worse with a long, plain, expressionless face. I think it's good. Yep. But he's built pretty solidly. Um, yeah, the plastic is thick enough where you want it. He fits together really well. The piece that we showed in jet mode that was kind of wonky, it fits totally fine in bot mode, so that's kind of weird. But uh, yeah, here he is. He's great. All lilac colored. Very imposing, like Anna mentioned. He's, he's about the size of Megatron. Yeah, he feels big, even if he isn't gigantic. And, you know, one thing I would definitely say is that I've read some other opinions on this figure that he's um, a little bit plain and feels just a little bit under detail for his size. And I'd say, like, that might be a little bit accurate if you're comparing him to the Earthri or Earthrise and Siege toys, who have a lot of that, like, you know, panel lining type stuff on him. I'd say his panel lining is more medium to low, which I like because it makes him appear more like animation models, yeah. which probably has to do with, you know, he's going to really fit with Studio Series 86 a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like this is really a Studio Series 86 toy that they're like, we don't have enough room to fit him in since we made Hot Rod of Voyager, so, like, let's throw him into uh, Kingdom here. Which is fine. I Talk have no at the same time. That. You know, whatever. Yeah, it's no problem for me either. I just, I just wanted to point that out because some people do call him plain, and I think that he is plain compared to those like panel lining tastic um, Earth Rides and Siege toys. But I think it's for the better. <laughs> I think he actually looks better for it because he has less unnecessary details. He's more just the cyclonist you know and love, or know and feel indifferent towards. I think it helps him look futuristic as well. Yeah, he's sleek. Because I think technically. This vehicle moves now 15 years out of date since the movie takes place in 2005. But, uh, you know, he, he still looks futuristic the way he is here, and I, I like that. One thing I was worried about is because his feet are a little bit shallow in there, they kind of remind me of the shockwave feet, so I was afraid we wouldn't get much ankle. But we actually get a good ankle. Like, he can ankle tilt just mm -hmm. fine even though it looks like he won't be able to, so I was pumped about that, because I really like to post my figures. At least mine are very firm ankles. Like they don't Oh, they are. Move. They are firm, and I was playing with Double Dealer earlier. His feet have become not so firm anymore. They're very, um... Uh-oh. Very comfortable. He's not as posable as he used to be. How much have you been playing with Double Dealer's feet there? Jeez. Not at all. Like, huh. I barely touched them. Like, when I took him down from the shelf, I was like, oops, I just realized I don't really like this toy. Uh-oh. I think I'm probably going to end up getting rid of it. And then I was like, uh-oh, the feet are floppy. That makes that harder. I don't know. I don't know that it really matters that much. No, it's not a big deal. Anywho, we're talking about Cyclonus. So he's got the good angle tilt. He's got the wrist swivel, right? Like... Like, when we started looking at the Hot Rod pictures, we were all like, look, he's got all the articulation he should have in, like, a, a Masterpiece level figure, almost, and a, in a deluxe size Voyager. That's really cool. It must have been them taking a Voyager down to deluxe size that allowed them to do it. And then freaking Cyclonus comes out, and he has just as much articulation, but he's a Voyager size Voyager. So he's like, take that Hot Rod. I'm just as good as you, but I'm bigger. I mean, I feel like, again, that they're trying to make everything to the scale of the animation models, you know? And so, like, I don't know. The, the size isn't necessarily... Like, I almost wish that they would redo the naming of the size classes and call it something else just so people would stop calling it, you know, like, whatever. Stop complaining by things that are smaller or whatever. I don't know. Like, I feel like that even though these are smaller, they're better toys. Never We've stop complaining. Deluxe for like twenty five years now. Huh. 
And he has good shoulders, too. Like, the way his shoulders are engineered, even though he has a little bit of um, shoulder pad going on, he actually gets full movement all the way up. So, I mean, my shoulders go up further, but his don't need to. They're good. A good arm movement. I mean, obviously, the wings give a little bit of kibble, but that's, you know, Cyclonus has always had his little fairy wing on his back, so they're there. The only other thing I could have wanted to come with this set is a nightstick. Yeah. Although, if you look at the rest of uh, Studio Series 86 and, and the other Target Master characters like Cup, Hot Rod, Blur, and Scourge, none of them come with Target Masters either. And I'm sort of thinking that they'll all appear in like a box set that Amazon or Pulse or something. That would like be a, nice. A Battle Master six pack or whatever. And there they all are. Boom. Even if they just took the Battle Masters from Siege and painted them nice, like mm-hmm. actually put them up to like Studio Series 86 level paint, I would be very happy with that. So like Target Master. I so, Christian, what they're going to do is, is they're going to put them in, like, a $50 pack with a figure that's, a, like, a repaint of something you don't need so that you have to buy it. You know, I think Another if they put six of them together, like, 30, they could do it. Or they could do, like, two of the um, the Centurion weapon packs and do, like, three Battle Masters and a Deluxe in one, three Battle Masters and a Deluxe in the other, and include some other stuff like Jazz's... Uh, grapple reel, you know, something, you know, parts like that that you would want. I guess he looks all right with the Generations one. I hadn't really put it in his hand yet, but it's okay. Oh, that is kind of nice, actually. That works. I, I was expecting it to look bad, but it doesn't. Yeah, you know, they've used that one individually a bunch of times. Throw that one in again. Who cares? Yeah, sure. He's got a nice big gun. I honestly don't remember if this looks like his G1 gun or not because I lost that probably like a day after I got him as a child. The paint on this feels very powdery. Does it feel powdery to you guys? On the gun? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. I like how I it looks. Why. It works with his lilac well. Yeah, it, it does. It just it feels like I could just take my fingernail and scratch it all off. You might I'm not be able gonna. to. Don't find out. It just it feels not quite right. Yeah, Josh says that neither one of his panels will tab in all the way. And I felt like that, like the first time that I transformed mine, I felt like that. And it seemed like the, the one kind of like worked its way in, you know, like the longer I had it in jet mode and kind of fiddled with it. But the other one is definitely like mistransform or whatever, misshapen. Mine's the same as Joshua's. Neither one went in correctly in jet mode. Maybe once I work it out, you know, I've only transformed it the once. Maybe it'll get better. Who knows? But yeah, like, I think that's... to do with the paint. Because those are painted pieces as opposed to uh, just molded pieces. That's one of two complaints be. I have with this figure. And I have to say, like, you know, usually I have a lot more than two complaints about any figure. I really love this thing. Like, this has been one of, like, my favorite toys I've opened in quite a while. Just because nostalgia. I got a little bit of nostalgia goggles just because... I was a child when I had the original Cyclonus, and I loved them. I thought he was a cool toy, and I destroyed him utterly. I still, like, up until the time I moved out of my mother's house, I was finding random his arms and feet and, like, half his head and random boxes. So, <laughs> I played with my toys. They're fun. I don't know. I, I feel like this figure is, is um, similar to, like, the Optimus Prime, you know, where... There's probably other, like, third-party ones that I've gotten where I kind of like the looks of and whatnot. But, like, overall, it's, like, a total package. Like, it just it feels really solid, and it's fun to, you know, mess with and flip back and forth and pose and, and all it that is. kind of thing. So it's just it kind of just hits all the right, you know, notes or whatnot. And I know, Anna, you had mentioned before that... Uh, you had the Magic Square version, and I think it's, like, one of the first times that you just, like, threw it directly in your cell pile after yeah. messing with this. Yeah, I didn't really have to think about it, because the, the Magic Square one has quite a few problems. Like, it has a really odd face. The whole thing is strangely two-tone, and I was just like, well, this doesn't have any of those problems, so that one just and went away. Even though it's a good figure. Like, I just only need one of any given character, so 
get rid of it. Well, I'm getting rid of it in the future sometime. The only other complaint, quote unquote, I would have about this figure is the one we all knew about, and that's the knees. The knees are, they can look really bad. You know, if you extend his leg all the way and you view him from the side, it looks bad, right? That looks weirdly gappy. You can see the hole into it. But there are ways to fix it. Like in every pose, you can get his knee, since it's double jointed, to fold in. You can get it in a way that, you know, it doesn't really show the gap. So you just have to kind of work with it and be patient. And even when you pose it, you can still do that. And it actually looks better pose like that because you can just push it in. And then, you know, the knee's bent and it's fine. It's just you can't just pull it all the way out and just leave it where it sits and it'll look good. You have to work with it a little. But that's not so bad, right? Because he gets a lot of posability from it. You know, I think I'm going to disagree with you just slightly on that one. I feel like I need to pull the knees all the way out the way I have it, you know, the, the fully extended way where it has knee gaps, in order for it to look proportional. You know, I pulled him out of the box and his his legs were like, you know, this, like you mentioned. And to me, it looks like he's got little stubby legs now. I don't know what it is. The proportions feel off to me if you do that. I think if so you put them all me, the way in, it gets a little too stubby. I think if you put them where the entire circle part shows, but no deeper, I think it still looks okay. I do agree that to have the leg length that I think is correct, you do have to extend them all the way. But I feel like I can compromise with this length. That, yeah. That's, like, I'm okay that's with not, this. He's still a little, bad. yeah, his legs are still a little shorter than I feel like they should be proportionally. But it's not, like, I don't look at him and just be like, ugh. So this is probably how I would display it. I think the way I'm going to have him displayed, I will do it with um, you know, the fully extended knee, and the kneecaps will cover it from my vantage point, so I think I'll be okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm definitely going to pose him with his knees bent, so I had to kind of work with it a little, but I found ways that I like it a lot. So I've already put him up in several places around the house posed, and he looks it, good. It is very cool that it has that flexibility, and I have to yeah. think that you know, beyond transformation, that is intentional. Maybe. I'm not really sure, but it, it's good. I'm not so, going to so, complain about it. Anna, is it kind of like Elf on the Shelf for you? It's like Cyclonus on a Shelf? Uh, he moves all around. It's true. He watches you sleep, watches you cook. It's very friendly. So, you know, I, I just, to finish the articulation, his head moves good, and he has waist swivel. Like, there's nothing in the same. I don't really have complaints. I don't have complaints about this figure, which feels weird. I'm supposed to start whining at this point, but so Catherine like was asking if there were any Maybe. like potential remolds for this figure uh, that could be done, or oh, repaints, remolds, like other other uses. Um, I really hope that since there's not a lot of uses for the mold, that they do an IDW uh, Cyclonus because, like, I have the MMC one and I'm not a huge fan of that figure. Like, it's fine, but it could have been better or whatever. So I'd like, I don't know, I almost kind of feel like this, if you did it right, could actually look better than that. Yep, and I think Shadow Glass will come eventually. Oh, if that I Shadow Glass well. too. Yeah. This thing will look hot in hot rod colors. It will. It looks super cool. Yeah, so you could... I think he looks okay with the... Um, who made this tailgate? I don't even remember. Make toys. Make toys, yeah. Um, that's why I never transform it. Um, I think he looks okay with the make toys tailgate. I feel like the tailgate's a little bit smaller than he should be. But, you know, the combination of this with the Generations figure, this is a little bit too big that he should be. So, will I ever be truly happy? Who knows? But they're okay. So I, I think it fits. Redone, I think the scale looks good to me. I think if this was redone as a IDW-style Cyclonus, these two would look fine together. Like, obviously, these two characters have never met each other because this is a different Cyclonus. But... You know, if you got the IDW version, they would be cool together. Yep, and I think there would be room, at least in my collection, for both. Yeah, for sure. And Shadow Glass. It's a really good toy. I don't know if I have to have Shadow Glass, but that's pretty, though. Yeah. 
But yeah, I, I feel like in general this figure, like when you took it out of the box, you're like, wow, this seems like a step up from what we've been getting, you know? Like, I don't know, it just feels like, like it feels like the, in, I haven't weighed it, but it, it feels more solid and weighty than, you know, some of the other stuff that we've gotten. So it's, it's definitely a really nice figure. I think it uses the mass it has as well. I don't think it's a particularly heavy or weighty figure, but I think it actually uses the mass well. So therefore it comes out really nice. And I have to say, like, when I saw pictures of this toy, I thought, like, this reminds me of the G1 figure, but it's too blocky, and I'm going to hate it. And then when I got it, I was finally like, oh, wow, I don't hate this at all. This is amazing. Yep. So if good. you thought it looked too blocky in pictures, you'll probably feel differently when you hold it. Just, you were like me on that one. It's pretty, and it works well. I think that's a high recommend from all of us. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Go get him. You're not going to feel like he's too small. You're not going to feel like he's too simple. You're not going to feel like he's ugly. He's cool. Um, I was going to mention tomorrow night, uh, Oof My Wallet um, is going to be on the YouTube channels at 930 Eastern, 830 Central. So <clears throat> come check that out. Um and uh, we did TFLP last night, as we mentioned before. We talked about the Earthrise figures, or I'm sorry, Earthrise Netflix show. If you want to get our thoughts on that, um, hopefully, cut the tape will be back this week. We'll see. Um, yeah, thank you to uh, you guys and everyone to the chat. Oh, and then book club. I forgot to mention that on the audio last night. Uh, book club, robots in disguise, issues twelve through fourteen. So, uh, and one last thanks. note, for once, oh. you can actually still get this figure. He's just starting to appear oh, in places, so he will be gettable. Be patient. He'll come back Yeah, around. luckily Wave 1, you should be able to get most of that stuff. And we all so. got ours from GameStop, right? So that's why we ended up getting it pretty early. But he'll be trickling out over time. So, yeah. All right, well, thank you, everyone. And we will see you next week. Bye. Night. Bye.